one sec. And there we go. Sort of differences between Arcane and Canon Universe in League of Legends, because I keep getting comments like this. Arcane is an adaptation with changes made to suit the style of a TV show. Um, Arcane is probably different from Core, so Riot doesn't have to type Piltover and Zaun. And uh, comments like that. So, we're just gonna see the differences, and that's it. Call the day. Ever since Arcane came out, there was one question that kept coming up. Hmm. Is Arcane canon? Well, it was confirmed that Arcane is different. And that yeah. apparently it shouldn't be taken as the truth over the game. So the Yeah, the other thing is there's a lot of um how they say love letters to the to the league players here. So for example, like the Vi Jinx being sisters thing, apparently was just a fan theory um, when I believe when Vi was released or when Jinx was released, not sure, one of them. Uh, so that was just a fan theory that they just said like, you know what, let's throw it into Arcane, stuff like that, right? It's like, it's more like a love letter. The characteristics of the characters is pretty much the same as it is in Canon, but the events are different. Though, I would say many, the attitudes between the champions is kind of similar to canon, but yeah. They are essentially saying that Arcane is not exactly canon compared to the core universe. Which is exactly the opposite of what everyone wants. I've heard yeah. that right. Yeah, I agree. I really wanted a story that is a part of the universe. And in fact, I would much rather have a Shurima story than Piltover Zaun. I really couldn't care less about Piltover Zaun. I really couldn't care less about Vi, Caitlyn, Jinx, Jace, Hymer. All these characters are like, dude, I don't even give a shit about them. Give me the adventures, give me the betrayals, give me the kingdom, stuff like that. Give me Demacia, which now after knowing Demacia, I'm like, damn, I, that would be a pretty good story. But honestly, I just want a Shurima Arcane, if anything. If anything, I would say Shurima is so much more interesting because it ties into Noxus. And again, these are like the major freaking nations. I don't give a shit about this part. It's like, it's so minute in the grand scheme of things. That's why I just don't care about it. When I know that there's like fucking ancient ones that can destroy the world, the last thing I care about is about sisterly love. I want big empires. I want some real damage done. I want some fucking wars happening. This shit? I don't give a fuck. Hesitant whether they want to turn this into the canon story. To which I have to say, yes, Riot. Everyone wants our game to be canon. I don't think there is a single person who wouldn't want that. But I just don't care thing, about this part. Riot doesn't need to necessarily turn Arcane into the main canon universe. Now, I have never seen a Marvel movie, Yellow. but I know that the cinematic universe is different from the core universe, which is in the comics. It does, but it still follows a lot of main, like, main, like, the characters are still the same as they are to, an, to the, the majority of the character is still the same as it is in the comics. Obviously, the interactions or like their history is different because of like the events that happened. Like one is in modern world, one is like in the 60s, but it's the same. And I would say this is true for Arcane. The characters are still pretty much the same as they are in League. It's just the events that happen. So it's like take all the characters, they have the same personalities, put them in a different scenario. That's basically what Arcane is. It seems like Rat may be doing the same thing here. It's that the Arcane universe may be different from the canon core universe, yeah. which is fine, but I'm sad to see that some people will be confused. Because I'm all of the characters in Arcane changed from their canon versions. And yes. so today, for once, let me be the nerdy guy who reads everything. You know Let's all go. those people who have read the Game of Thrones books and they talked about how different it is from the TV series? That's you. I've never been one of those. But today, I will be. Yeah. Because in this video, we're gonna talk about all the differences between the core canon universe and the arcane universe. And we'll see if there is any way to make arcane canon. But not gonna lie, Jace's head is way too big for his fucking body. <laughs> Look at that. 
I will only talk about the stories up until the point where Arcane would end, because the rest of the story may still be referenced in season 2. So now, without further ado, let's start with the main characters of Arcane, mm -hmm. Victor and Jace. In the core universe, <laughs> so, origins, Let's start with the main character of Arcane, Victor is like, bro, like, uh, I guess to an extent, but not really. Be different. His family, House Tullis, was never mentioned. We mm -hmm. only know that after he got into science, he was offered patronage in Clan Jayopara, which was one of Piltover's most respected ruling clans. Now, not only have we never heard of Jayopara in Arcane, but in Arcane, Jace actually gets patronage in the Kiraman family, which mm -hmm. is something totally different. According to Jace's bio, Clan Jayopara was one of the first clans to explore Shrima and find the Hex Crystals. Curiously mm -hmm. enough, in Camille's story, it is said that the Pharaoh's family were the first to find the Hex Crystals. So we actually don't know which one of these was the first. Eh, about the same time. <laughs> House Pharaoh's was referenced in Arcane. Clan Jayopara, where Jace is supposed to be, never even appeared there. Anyway, after Jace accepted the offer and he joined the clan, he spent most of his early years constructing potential Hextech devices and designing transformable multi-tools for the working class. The difference here is that in the core universe, basic Hextech was already developed. It wasn't advanced, there were no major Hextech devices, unless you maybe count Camille, yeah. you know, we don't actually know how old she is, but in our At game, this point, yeah, we don't. Jace who invented Hextech. In the core universe, Jace's personality is also different. He is supposed to be is far it? more arrogant than he is in Arcane. He, he was described as the He becomes a bit arrogant towards the end though. I feel like his character is changing from like that the curious student who like discovered something new to be a rather I won't say arrogant per se towards the end, but he is getting to those levels. Right? Dismissing? He's being because he's being overly complimented by a specific character, whatever her name is, the one that looks like Santa. He's being overly com uh, complimented by her, and she's uh, pushing him to greater and greater heights. Also, the the Jace that we know is a lot older, so and the Jace in Arcane is a lot younger, so he can become that arrogant guy, right? In universe, he's always posh. He is, yeah. In And just gets more arrogant in Arcane. He starts... Yeah, he is a very nice guy, and, but in Arcane, though, as the Arcane story goes, you see he's like... It's not that he becomes, like, not nice, but he's, like, less altruistic, or... If, is altruistic the right word? Less, um... Less greater good kind of thing. Maybe they are less jaded. Right. And I feel like as it goes on, first of all, he matures, he becomes like a lot more handsome than he is now. Right. Like, let's assume this was going to be he's banging apparently like one of the hottest characters in the, you know, in the in Arcane. And she keeps complimenting him. Every girl wants to suck his dick. He's becoming super fucking famous. He is already super famous, super rich. I feel like, yeah, he can easily become way more arrogant and way more posh, right? He just, like, that's that would be his environment. And we only know him as, like, this very young kid who somehow, dude, imagine you're a kid who just signed up to university and you become the dean within, like, a year, right? It's, like, it's fucked up, right? It's, like, that shit can, like, really change the person. <laughs> ...and unwilling to slow his pace to help his peers catch up. It was so bad, most people didn't want to work with him. And as he grew older, his patience grew even shorter. So the only difference here is like when he said like most people didn't want to work with him. What happens in Arcane is Victor wants to keep working with him, but he doesn't work with Victor. Like he just doesn't have time to just, you know, do stuff the, in Victor's pace. And again, that can also translate later to most people not, don't want to work with him because his pace is just way faster. Right. I mean, you can view it that way. I'm not saying it's necessarily what will happen, but it's like you can see hints of this developing into that kind of character. It wouldn't be like 
too unrealistic if he just jumps into that character in Arcane 2 towards like mid to end of the season if he becomes more posh or like how you said it or just like more um arrogant stuff like that because like he will notice like yo no one can keep up with my brilliance it's like whatever right oh yeah it can happen Jay it can happen he's supposed to be a pretty awful guy while in Arcane, he actually cared about the people around him. At first. And he even stopped Hextech development for the safety of people. In the core universe, At first. especially when he was younger, that would be out of character. Yes. Some time later, he finally found a person who was able to keep up with his intellect. And that person was Victor. In the core universe, they met at a mandatory progress day party. And they bonded over the fact that... Just, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, he can keep up with the intellect, but like their path, their paths are so different that it's like Jace is going to like one direction, Victor goes to like his own direction. Because Victor's motivation really is helping himself because his body is like uh, is degrading, right? It's like he doesn't even know how long he has to live. He's like in a wheelchair or some shit. Like Victor's purpose is very um, selfish, not necessarily bad selfish, but it is selfish. It, it will become bad selfish later, but right now it's just very selfish. He's motivated because his life depends on it. Meanwhile, Jace's goals are... Listen to this. Jace's life is doesn't even depend on this technology, and he's at the same pace as Victor, who is super motivated. That could just show you like what would happen if Jace's life depended on it, how much more brilliant Jace would be, if anything. And neither of them wanted to be there. In Arcane, they met after Jinx blew up his lab. Anyway, at this progress day party, Victor expanded Jace's intellectual horizons, and he challenged many of his assumptions. We then learned that while Jace... And also, don't forget, Jace is a kid at this point, and he challenged Victor, who is an adult and an expert in, in certain fields, who was a professor, and this kid challenged his intellect. Just so just imagine when Jace is in like his mid twenties, thirties, and like of course he can easily become super arrogant. Humanity through versatile technology. Anyways, that's enough <laughs> interrupting the video. Itself, such yeah. as physical decay or illogical prejudice. They constantly argued with each other, but their conflicts never got personal. Yeah. They respected each other's work because they still had a common goal. In Arcane, you can rarely ever see them argue over an invention. Later, the two invent a mechanized... They can easily start arguing... Oops, what the hell is this? Huh? One second. There we go. They can easily start arguing later because of how the Victor's story ended in Arcane. Right? He can easily be like, yo, like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, you went too far. Right? Because we all know what happens with Victor and what he's gonna be. Right? It's like... <laughs> that's when they can start arguing, which would then eventually turn Victor into like uh, this villain, even though right now we can see the hints of him becoming villain. But the whole time, v Victor, I would say, what was like Ark in 12 episodes? I would say 10 of the episodes with Victor, if it's like 10 out of 12, he did, like, you didn't see him. I didn't even realize that he's Victor, the evil genius, okay? I didn't even like connect the dots. And only towards like the last couple of episodes, like, oh, fuck, this is Victor? Oh, shit, shit is about to go south. So at that point, I would say Ark in Season 2, they will probably start arguing. <laughs> because he will start... Because Jace's goal is not really to make weapons. This would be Victor's goal. He'll start making weapons with it. For Piltover's dock workers. It was light enough to not let the workers drown, but sturdy enough to enhance their strength. Finally, the two inventors got into a major argument yep. when Victor wanted to give the suit an implant that mm -hmm. would increase the wearer's strength and yep. prevent them from getting tired, panicking, or disobeying instructions from their superior. Or disobeying instructions. Victor yeah. to do this because he knew it would dramatically reduce the number of accidents. But Jace didn't want to go through with it yeah. because he found the removal of free will immoral. They disagreed with. Only thing I dislike about Arcane was that they are taking Victor towards a void character. Was he taking to a void character? I don't remember that part. I remember last thing I saw about Victor was last thing I remember was him losing his shit because he kept failing with the uh, technology. But then at the end, it's like he found that glimmer of insight or some shit like that. And that was pretty much it as far as I remember for Victor. I don't even remember anything that had to do with the void character part. 
Though could be. Um, what I want to say about this part, though. So, so here's like another. Is this from Arcane or this is from the canon? One sec. Later, the two in it, you can rarely ever see them argue over an invention. Later, the two invent a mechanized construction suit for Piltover's dock workers. It was light enough to not let the workers drown, but sturdy enough to enhance their strength. Was this in Arcane or was this in the in canon? Also, uh, the hex score is becoming void if you look at the science causes hunger. Oh. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I see, I see what you mean. Yeah. I faint, faintly remember something like that. Yeah, I just probably didn't... It it wasn't that important. It was important for, like, for the future, but it probably wasn't important for like the plot at the moment, so I probably didn't really pay attention. Also, given that, again, I really didn't care about the characters of Arcane, so I was kind of like watching it on a second monitor-ish kind of thing. I got the gist of it, but it's like I couldn't just like watch Arcane and be immersed in it. It was just like not a story I cared about too much. Uh, anyways, if this part he says it's about what they did in Arcane, that Victor want to reduce the free will, again, it just shows the future of the characters right away, right? Finally, the two inventors got into a major argument mm -hmm. when Victor wanted to give the suit an implant that would increase the wearer's strength and prevent yeah. them from getting tired, panicking, or disobeying instructions from their superiors. Mm -hmm. You see, Victor wanted to do this because he knew it would dramatically reduce the number of accidents. Yeah, function, like... So this is the problem with like I would say like scientists as a whole like how they're portrayed which is like they're very logical the functionality of this will increase performance stuff like that but it's like what does it take away free will but it's like yeah but I'm not gonna use take free will yeah but the option will always be there <laughs> but Jace didn't want to go through with it because he found the removal of free will immoral yep. they disagreed with each other so much it's fundamental disagreement over this. Yeah. But once again, it ended with Jace being an awful person. He ran up into the academy and warned the professors about Victor's invention. Okay, so this, so this is not Arcane. This is the canon lore. Okay. Victor was stripped of his honor and kicked out of the scientific community. Okay, so this didn't happen in Arcane. His only real friend. But that scenario can easily happen in Arcane too. I can see it happening in Arcane too, easily. And Jace returned back to his awful, arrogant personality and he studied alone. This is where he got a hold of a Hextech gem. In Arcane, he got it from the... And again, so in canon, he went back to his arrogant personality and started alone. In Arcane, what they can do is, he becomes arrogant because he studies alone because he doesn't believe anyone can study with him. Alright, it's like... It's like, what came first, chicken or egg kind of things. You can easily make Jason... I, I, I think I went over the subject too much, anyways. Here, he got it Just more examples. But in a really different way. When Clan Jayopara obtained a Hextech gem, none of their students were able to tap into its power. But at that point, Jace was so arrogant, his superiors wanted to teach him a lesson. And so they punished him by not even offering the gem to him. Only okay. after everyone else failed. As the very last person, they finally <laughs> gave Jace a chance. And so he did his own experiments on it. These experiments were very similar to what we saw in Arcane, but in the core universe, he did those without Victor. However, these experiments mm -hmm. led into a power spike. You know, in Arcane, it actually exploded. And this yeah. power spike was detected by Victor. And so he arrived at Jace's lab, demanding only one thing. You see, Victor also spent some time alone, working on his own projects. And he figured out how to save everyone. He knew how to eradicate disease, hunger, and hatred. If Jace joined him, they could save humanity from itself. All he mm -hmm. needed was it's... the Hextech gem for what he called... This is like probably like one of the most um, philosophical debates out there. And it's like the only way to save humanity from itself is to basically cease humanity. Like... The only way to avoid diseases and stuff like that is to be robots, right? The only way to avoid emotional damage is to not have emotions. But if you lose that, you lose your man and stuff like that. It's like, is it worth the loss then? You know, all that shit. 
a glorious evolution. For science, it definitely is worth it. For morality, it's not. Jace disagreed, telling Victor that what he really needed was a moral compass. Uh -huh. And the two started a fight. Hilariously Again. enough, even though in Arcane, Victor is very fragile, in the core universe, Victor grabbed the crystal and knocked Jace unconscious with it. Just picture that. Oh, Fred. Oh, Fred and in like his. Yeah, okay. Victor then returned back to his lab. What do you mean, bro? Like, no matter how fragile he is, he goes up to Jace, uses his cane, hits him in the knee. The Jace is on the floor. Let's be real, okay? All sorts of <laughs> things to himself. And Jace used his own hextech powered inventions to fight him. That's really all we need to know about these two. Yeah. Most of these scenes will be adapted into Arcane. Harmson. Yeah, Harmson. So the major differences from Arcane was that Jace's hammer was a mining tool, which he powered up by a small shard of the Hextech crystal, which well, that... he got during the experiments. The Atlas gauntlets were not actually his invention. He just figured out how to power them up. Yeah, but... was also a mining tool. More than that, he had no connection to the Kiraman family whatsoever. True. Yeah, that's the biggest change. Caitlin and Jace haven't really talked to each other that much. But from Victor's perspective, this story has some more differences. The reason why Victor cares about the mind-affecting implants is because Victor comes from Zone, just like in Arcane. And there, he studied all the frequent accidents. After doing so, he found out it all came not to mechanical failure, but to human error. That's why he's heavily into augmentation. He yeah. knows that most of human suffering comes from humans. Yep. Anyway, after taking interest in safety, Victor was accepted into the Ferguson Camp Forge, where he worked as a safety inventor. Within a month of him working there, the Camp Forge dropped down to zero accidents. And this is where we got a big difference. When he was 19, he was surprised to be offered a place in Zone's prestigious Academy of Techmaturgy. There, Victor attracted the eye of Stanwyck Padidli, who convinced Padidli. Victor to leave Zone Pressed. and go to the Academy of Piltover instead. So in the core universe, it was Stanwyck Padidli who convinced Victor to go to Piltover instead of staying in Zone. Mm -hmm. In Arcane, it was revealed it was Heimerdinger who offered him a place in Piltover, so he skipped Zone entirely. And that's because in Arcane, Stanwyck was long dead. So they just straight up removed that character. They confirmed this in one of the episodes. You can even see Stanwyck's statue there. But this is where another mm. major difference comes in. In the core universe, by now the two cities were known as Piltover and Zone. In Arcane, that is not the case. There, the Oh yeah, Zone is not a city at that point. It's just like fucking slums city is simply built over yeah. and the possibility of the city splitting into two and being called built over and zone was only being voted in at the very yeah. end of season one so throughout all of those stories in arcane zone didn't the timeline's end. different they simply called it the undercity so that's yeah. why in arcane victor being at the university of zone wouldn't would make sense, sense yeah because in arcane zone doesn't exist it will likely become a thing at the beginning of season two, after the two halves finally split. Anyway, as we mentioned in Jace's half, the two meet at a party, but in Victor's bio, we learn that while the two were still friends, there was a chemical spill that destroyed an entire district of Zone. This is likely the same disaster that led into the augmentation of Oriana, but that's not important. Okay. What's important is that during this disaster, Victor returned home to help in the civilian rescues. However, it was dangerous to be there in person. The streets were full of toxic fumes. And so, Victor constructed Blitzcrank to help in the cleanup. Yeah. Blitzcrank was such a good creation, he started to think on his own. Which wasn't really Victor's intention. In the story, the two kinda became friends. And they tried to help those affected by the toxins. But since, even when working together, the two couldn't prevent more death, they just parted ways. And since Blitzcrank was developing his own personality, Victor just let him go off and do whatever he wanted. After all, Blitzcrank was developed to help people and save lives. Of course, Blitzcrank didn't appear in Arcane, but I do believe they may be saving him for season 2. I'm honestly surprised that they didn't have like a, I wouldn't say like a, maybe a silhouette or something like that. 
of Blitzcrank in Arcane would have been pretty cool. Like some like a side project that Victor was always working on. And uh shit like that. That would I think would be pretty cool. Or like at least maybe like the gauntlets or like the helm or something like that. Just like a part of Blitzcrank somewhere in Arcane. That would be pretty cool. They did reference cranking stuff a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Anyway, after okay, fair enough, that's also a hint. <laughs> when Victor returned back to Biltover, he learned that Professor Stanwyck stole credit for Blitzcrank's creation. And when mm -hmm. Victor filed a complaint about it, nobody believed him. This made him return to his inventions with Jace. And together they created the diving suit and the rest of the story happened. So as you can see, the differences are actually quite big. Victor has... The they're big, but I feel like they're not consequential. No sickness in the core universe. Also, his story heavily relies on Stanwyck Padidli, who was quite an ass. But that person yeah. isn't even alive in Arcane. Also in Arcane, it was Heimerdinger who praised him. While in the core Again, universe, that was... Again, not big. consequential though. How he got to Piltover, I don't think it matters. It's more like what he does in Piltover case also no sky and no hex core being developed with jace so while the glorious evolution of victor will be interesting to watch in arcane because yeah. there he is literally saving his own life in the core universe he is simply improving his own body he wants to make sure he can't make mistakes which would put people into dangerous situations yep. he is doing it to save lives doesn't he lose his humanity at some point though isn't Victor evil at the end of the day? Even though, like, he says doing for to save lives, I feel like doesn't he turn evil though? Like, even in the core universe, like canon universe, I feel like he is no. Not just his own. Now, with these two dealt with, let's now move on to the other main characters. The the main main characters, Vi. yeah. Vi's origins are actually quite different. This is what the Vi yeah yeah he's basically lost his humanity therefore like it's not he's not evil in the sense that it's like he's evil it's more like he he sees humans as uh deficient something like that right where it's like in his head it's like by you know he's saving humans from themselves by having them non-exist kind of thing right so it's like he's evil by his actions but not by his beliefs kind of thing some shit like that. I don't remember the exact lore of Victor, but it's like I feel like that's basically what happens. He loses his man. He becomes he becomes Agent Smith, you know? Where's that um uh He becomes this basically. That I've had during my time here. It came to me when I tried to classify your species. I realized that you're not actually mammals. Every mammal on this planet instinctively develops a natural equilibrium with the surrounding environment, but you humans do not. You move to an area and you multiply and multiply until every natural resource is consumed. And the only way you can survive is to spread to another area. There is another organism on this planet that follows the same pattern. Do you know what it is? A virus. See, I feel like that's what Victor becomes later on as he loses his humanity and goes like full hextech. He basically, that's what he would consider humans. Right, it's like, <laughs> it's like a version of Victor. Anyways. Bio says, Though she had ended up in the crumbling Hope House orphanage, a notorious mad some scrapper claimed to have found her adrift in a bassinet large enough for two in the ruins of a collapsed cam lab. So yeah, in the core universe, Vi was an orphan straight up from the beginning. But in Arcane, she was not an orphan up until the uprising, which is where her parents got killed and where Vander found her. It's pretty and much the beginning her, though, but while yeah. Being an orphan, Vi formed a gang. And she did all the typical street kid stuff. This is very similar to what she did with Milo and Clagger. And she then found a mentor in the owner of a bar on the edge of the lanes. Of course, this is where the bio is referencing Vander. But his name was never revealed because it was kept a secret for Arcane. 
So yes, Vander is canon. We Bro. Tell me this isn't Graves. Come on. <laughs> I I know like I know he's supposed to be someone, but like come on. <laughs> we then learned that this mentor helped her calm her self-destructive tendencies and refined her moral code. We then get to the story of how she got her gauntlets, which yeah. is also very different. She planned yeah. a heist of a rich mine. She needed more people to pull it off, and so she brought in the Factory Wood Fiends gang. During the heist, this gang killed the owner of the mines, the one who was supposed to get all the payment which they were looking for. And in doing so, the gang also trapped all the other miners in the tunnels. Even as both gangs fled with the loot, Vi didn't want to let innocent people die. And so she grabbed a pair of mining oversized pulverizer gauntlets and used them to smash open a path to free the miners. Then, still wearing the gauntlets, she gave the entire Fiends gang, and I quote, a legendary beating. This is where the storyline of Arcane would have ended. But interestingly enough, Vi still references the Civil War of Arcane. This is what it says. Vi eventually disappeared from Zorn during a time of great upheaval, when tensions with Piltover were running high. This is likely referencing what is going to happen in Season 2. Because the story then says that when the streets had to be calmed, the sheriff of Piltover arrived, together with her new part. Yeah, you told me this before, based on that synth cinematic towards the end. Yeah. Her vi. So yeah, her story in the core universe doesn't really tell us why she joined the Wardens. Also, by the way, in the core universe, the Enforcers are called the Wardens. Anyway, the biggest difference in her story is that there was no Jinx at all and no Silco. Yeah, the whole Jinx stuff. So this is what I feel like the whole Vi Jinx thing in Arcane is literally fan service. I mean, they made like the whole uh, series revolve around the, their sisterhood, but it is the fan service that uh, you were talking about Talis, right? Even though in Arcane, Jinx is the very core of Vi's story. Well... That's why everyone wants Arcane to be canon. Now, when it comes yeah. to Jinx, her entire canon story that would match Arcane Season 1 is explained in the very first paragraph of her bio. You ship so, it? <laughs> yeah. It so short, I ship the sisterhood of the traveling pants here. Of the traveling weapons. Wielding an array of dangerous weapons. A few remember as a relatively innocent girl from Zorn, mm -hmm. a tinkerer with big ideas who never quite fit in. Mm -hmm. No one knows for certain what happened to turn that sweet young child into a wild card, infamous for her wantom acts of destruction. But once Jinx exploded onto the scene in Piltover, her unique talent for sowing anarchy instantly became the stuff of love. Do you think Arcane is literally just a love story for Jinx? Like, whoever created Arcane is like, bro, I love Jinx so much, we are not changing her. Everyone else will change to fit into the Jinx story. Imagine Arcane is actually just, like, Jinx, like, canon Jinx, having a fucking dream. <laughs> it's, like, fucking crazy. That's it. No explanation of possible connections to Vi, yep. Vander, yeah. or even a mention of Silco. That's because her story in the core universe is focusing on her present crazy days. Before Arcane, her past was a mystery. And now... They're both they're great and bad the same. Oh yeah, it would be so bad, I think. Like, we know that it would be great as like the biggest fucking twist. But it would just be bad if when you start thinking about it, it's like, the fuck? That's like you feel cheated. Vi and Jinx were not together when they were kids. It's because their childhood is explained in Vi's bio. This is as to how... you heard, she was an orphan. Like how Glimmer is the explanation as to how Jinx gets excited. Was she not going crazy without the Glimmer? Was Glimmer like li really like that big of a trigger? I, j I honestly, I just don't remember from Arcane. with a gang that was it so how did jinx become crazy in the core universe no one knows we still don't know and once again that's why people want arcane to be canon yeah then we... as far as jinx is concerned 
yeah, you want it to be canned because it would explain everything about Jinx. But like, as far as everyone else goes, it's like kind of like not it. Gets to Caitlyn. With all the differences around Arcane, Caitlyn might actually be the most faithful to her canon version. There, while her parents mm. worked for the Wardens, Caitlyn did not. She was kind of just there, living off of her parents. And she had no connection to Vi or Jace, and in the core universe, Silco simply doesn't exist. So pretty much nothing that happened in Arcane Season 1 happened in her story. It all just skips to what might be happening in Season 2. Because then, during a progress day, her parents get kidnapped by a mysterious criminal known as C. But I she was a good gunner, but Glimmer explains how she can just lose it, lose it, along with her mental state and just get super fast and deadly. Okay, fair enough, yeah. Again, that might happen in Season 2. And lastly, if you're wondering about the rifle, the Hextech rifle replaces her hunting musket after she rescues her parents and she becomes an investigator. Once again, none of this happened in Arcade. Yeah, didn't happen yet. Possible, it may still come. Yeah. But yeah, Caitlyn might be the most... Well, again, she's she's supposed to become sheriff at some point. She's definitely not sheriff yet. Like, Ken, and, Ken Caitlyn is sheriff, right? It's like, sheriff of Piltover. Clearly, she's not sheriff yet. I don't even think she's, like... She's not even a cop. She's just, like... She was just curious for, like... She, well, no, actually, yeah, she is a cop to an extent. Not cop, cop, whatever. But it's, like, it was out of her jurisdiction to go into Zaun. She was just curious, basically to her canon version because their arcane is just skipped and so there is not yeah. much to change except for the fact that she didn't know Vi or Jace. Then we get to see who is a roller coaster. It always seemed like they changed something about him but yeah she's an enforcer she has like no she Zon was not in her jurisdiction at all like she was just like you know can you make sure that the streets are safe like the the safe streets that they remain safe kind of thing but it's like yeah her going to zan was just her being um curious and like you know then in a minor review overly zealous in her enforcer's job so for the vast majority it seems like singed was kept the same in the core universe Singed was fascinated by the interactions of the natural world, so he pursued a scholarship at the university. This is why I was saying when I was watching the Singed story, first of all, that in Arcane he's not that different. But the other thing that's like, how is Singed... Because this was like in the power levels, and they said that Singed was like... He was substantially stronger than some characters, and I was like, what? He's just a fucking mad scientist, okay? Like, him himself doesn't have a lot of strength. It's all the poisons and shit like that. That's all he is. Like, strength-wise, like, 1v1, if he doesn't have his poisons, he's weak, like, vic like handicap victor in Arcane. Uh, with two of the sheriffs being killed in Arcane, it opens the path for her to step up. Yeah, I don't think she will jump into being a sheriff right away. I feel like there will probably be, like, a temporary sheriff who will promote her to his position or her position at, at the, some point. Uh, but honestly... We all saw how Arcane ends, and there's a massive rocket flying towards a very important place. So, for all we know, all possible candidates for Sheriff might also die when they were in the building for some reason. Anyways, so in canon, Singe is said to be like this guy who kidnaps people, experiments on them. And it's like, you don't have to be very strong for that. You just have to have sleeping drugs, you know? It's like, it's not that big of a deal. Like, I don't feel like... Singed is that strong compared to like what he was in that video of like tier list, right? It's like I don't think he should be like bottom tier strength, but with his poisons and shit, I get it. Of Piltover. His research into the natural science was groundbreaking, but slowly people stopped paying attention to his work as everyone turned towards Hextech instead. Yeah. So he turned towards alchemy, but that made all the other scientists laugh at him. And slowly, as his fundings had to dried up, he was forced out of the university and out of Piltover. This is how he ended up in Zol. See, that's kind of weird to me. Just because, so it's like, just because everyone's moving on to Hextech doesn't mean that alchemy is not relevant. It's also like a completely different type of technology. Alchemy and like potions and stuff like that can work in the same time as Hextech, right? Imagine someone who's using Hextech, Hextech technology, Hextech tech. Hexic technology for their weapons and equipment and also gets like boosters 
in alchemy just imagine like how strong the person would be with that tech and the alchemy it would never make sense to me that a university or like something like whatever they haven't built over would ban someone who is doing uh, research on something that can work uh, in parallel to the other tech it's just so narrow-sighted and doesn't fit the bill with like what scientists are all about it's so weird. Singe body is augmented by Glimmer, giving him super strength and speed. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I I know he was experimenting on himself, but uh, I don't I don't didn't think he was experimenting that much. Like I knew there was some experimentation on himself, but the ones that are like super enhancements and stuff. I didn't think he was doing on himself at that point. Maybe because I'm thinking arcane. I guess maybe like in. In canon, he probably already did. But in Arcane, he didn't experiment on himself that much. He only experimented towards the end there, I believe. Around the second half of Arcane. Because he ran out of test subjects or some shit. Arcane. It was confirmed that Singe yeah. also previously worked in Piltover. But for unknown reasons, he parted ways with Heimerninger. So mm -hmm. regarding Singe's origins, Arcane... Probably philosophy differences. The canon story then simply says that in Zorn, his experiments, often of questionable ethicality, cast a wide net, augmenting humans, yeah, animals, it's not ethical. even the fusion of the two, among countless other endeavors. Of course, this is referencing Warwick. During Arcane, after... Sin there you go. Burned, there it is, Talis. This, this is what you're talking about. <laughs> his face. Which was weird, because in the core universe, Singed is wearing the bandages because Warwick scarred his face during his transformation. Oh. It wasn't because of the chemical burns. Oh. And at the end of season one, there it, is. it was revealed that Singed was working there it is. with Warwick the entire time. So once again, everything snapped back together. And now in Arcane, it again made sense why he had the bandages. It is because Warwick scarred him. And when it comes to hmm. Warwick, in the core universe, it was mentioned that Singed picked him up off of a street near a bar. He was pretty much a random person, a gangster hmm. who put his blade aside, who tried to pick up a new name to live a better life, but the sins of his past caught up to him. That's pretty much the description of Warwick when he was a human. But, you know, in Arcane, it is pretty much confirmed that it is Vander. Anyway, back to Singed. Singed there you go, Talis. It's pretty much confirmed. <laughs> there you go. Also created chemicals that allowed him to work tirelessly before he would collapse and sleep for days. Mm -hmm. Now, Shimmer was never mentioned. But it is possible that this is what the story is referencing. In Maybe. fact, interestingly enough, Shimmer was never actually mentioned anywhere in the canon universe. Yeah, that's it true. Is sometimes referenced, for example, in Mundo's story. But it is never named. So it feels like even though Riot knew that Shimmer... But didn't Mundo create his own chemicals? Mundo was like a self-scientist, right? And he created his own shit to the point where he even took out part of his brain, which made him smart or some shit. Shouldn't them and mixed it up with WoW ability. <laughs> yeah, no, I knew what you mean. Yeah, I know what you meant. Oh, you called it Glimmer, right? Yeah, I didn't even notice you called it Glimmer. Would be a thing because Arcane was in development for such a long time. They never called it Shimmer because they wanted to keep it a secret before Arcane. Fair enough. So while technically Shimmer may not be canon because it was never named anywhere, I think at this point it is unavoidable and it will be name dropped in the future. I mean, I don't think any of the chemicals that Singe or Mundo used had been named in canon lore so just giving it a name now doesn't really change anything in canon lore also this chemical the the color of this chemical is extremely similar to mundo's skin color like his default skin color just saying but yeah once again because silco technically doesn't exist in the core universe yeah that entire storyline was skipped and shimmer is kind of a mystery there after that storyline however Singed was approached by Noxians, and with sufficient fundings, he was allowed to continue his experiments, but he would also make weapons for the Noxians. Yeah, this is like, Who not in Arcane. Maybe that comes in season two as well. Did Arcane even mention Demacia or Noxus or uh, Shurima at any point in time? 
I think the closest we had as a reference outside of uh, Piltover and Zaun was when the chick that looks like Senna's mother came and she was somewhere else. Was it mentioned? I don't even remember it being mentioned at all. What was mentioned outside of like Zaun and Piltover? The black woman, I forgot her name. She's from Noxus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the, the chick that looks like Senna, her mom was the only reference outside of Piltover. Yeah, whatever her name is. Her grandmother is a high up General Nox. Yeah, that's literally the only thing we knew about Noxus in that whole thing, which really annoyed me because that's such like so much more interesting. <laughs> it's, like, it's like it's war. <laughs> But the main differences are that Singed doesn't have a daughter in the core universe, Shimmer pretty much doesn't exist, there is no connection... But he also doesn't have a daughter in Arcane. I mean, she he had a daughter in Arcane, but he doesn't have her now. So, it could... I mean... Whatever. I'm, I'm not saying that's like it should be in the canon, but I'm just saying it's like... He might have had a daughter in the canon, like that. That not that's not necessarily a difference. Daughter in the core universe, Shimmer pretty much doesn't exist. There is no connection to Victor, no connection to Rio, and no storyline with Silco. Yeah, which is pretty massive. Then there is Echo, who is totally different. Yeah, Echo. Echo was honestly like probably like the most random. Um. He had to fit in the story somehow because of his tech, but like, he's probably the most unexpected zone guy, I would say. Like, he's not, like, when you look at Arcane, it's like, he fits in, that's fine. But like, I didn't expect Echo to be there, let's just say it like that. Echo's parents worked for many hours in dangerous factories so that they could afford to send Echo up to Pilto. Yeah. Because, yes, in the core universe, Echo's parents yeah, are built over. actually alive. Yeah. In Arcane, it seems like he's just an orphan. Now, of course, even though his parents want to send him up to Piltover, Echo respects his Zonite origins. He knows Piltover doesn't care about Zone. And he knows that Zone has far better potential for his inventions. So, he himself just doesn't want to go there. He wants to stay in Zone. Uh, I like how they explain his powers as sort of precognition, and in season two he will create the Z drive or whatever it's called. Yeah. What's more interesting to me, I feel like Echo should have some like connection to Zillion. They need. I think they need to bring Zillion into the story for Echo to make more sense with his tech because the, it's very similar powers. Right? Like, reverse, reversing time. So I feel like they need to, like, meet or some shit like that. But I don't even know if they're gonna introduce Zillion, though. Then in Zone, but it feels like they would be related somehow. Somewhat of a gang which is called Lost Children of Zone. This is yeah. pretty much the alternative to Firelights, which yeah. don't exist in the core universe. Then, the story mentions that he found a hex crystal in a demolished lab, which most likely belonged to Victor, and which was destroyed by Jace a bit later on. This is most likely going to be some kind of an alternative story for Arcane in Season 2, because he still needs a Hextech gem to create his Z-Drive, and I yeah. assume the Z-Drive will be a thing in Arcane Season 2. Lastly, after each day in the streets, Echo always returns home, and there, his stories with his parents are some of the most heartwarming Echo's time ability is tech, Zill is magic. Okay, so... This is... Uh, I Unironically enough, this is actually from Thor. I believe it's from Thor 1. Like the first Thor movie. And everything that your tech can't explain right now is considered magic. But magic essentially is power that can be explained with tech once tech catches on so for example being able to shoot orbs of power of arcane energy like um uh what's it like jace's weapon if you didn't know that it was the the crystal like the tech the hex tech you would think it's magic so that's why like even though zills 
source is magic, it doesn't mean that technology cannot use said magic as a technology, right? It's just that technology didn't catch on yet. However, I feel like if Echo meets Zillion and he has that mind of like how to turn that technology into the magic that Zillion is using, I feel like that pretty much like solves that problem. It's like one is tech, one is magic, but like technology can perform magic, right? That's pretty much the whole point of the technology. Technology right now, even right now, if you think about it, it's like, how did you make fire back then versus how you can make fire now? It's like, well, just technology, right? It's like the fire is not magic, but before people knew how to make fire, for them, it was like thunder hitting from the sky and uh, hitting something and it goes on fire. That's how people knew what fire was. They thought it was magic. It's just the technology didn't catch on. Same, same thing I would say with like the Z drive. He will develop the technology to the point where he can perform this magic, if that makes sense. Stories in <clears throat> League of Legends. After he creates the Z drive, which allows him to briefly rewind time, what he does is that he sits at home, he waits for his parents to get home tired from their work, and they all just sit at a table as a family together. And mm. Echo keeps rewinding time so he can sit with mm -hmm. them for as long as possible. Oh, that's that's kind of sad, but yeah. Are just gone from arcane. Yeah. If there, we don't even know if though that interaction can be copied with uh, a friend that he will lose, a loved one he will lose, like maybe his girlfriend, whatever. Maybe he's gay, so his boyfriend, whatever. I don't know, but like <clears throat> you can easily like make that interaction happen again, and then someone finds him and takes it out of that loop that he's stuck in. Those parents are alive. But speaking of Echo's parental figures, we need to talk about his new buddy, Heimerdinger. Oh. Hey. Heimerdinger in Arcane is a really fleshed out character. He is yeah. full of charisma, always there. More so than he is in he Core, I believe. Built over. 200 years ago, he's been there during its foundation. Yep. He is the forefather of the entire place and the highest counselor. So when we compare it to all the stories he has in the core universe, yeah, I think Arcane story wins. Fair enough. Yeah, he has no story. <laughs> Heimer has like no story in core. Just he's just an inventor. All right, cool. Yeah, that's the video. Nice. Whew. Man, that was a fifty-two minute video for me. <laughs> All right, sounds good.